Hi, Bob Wilkins here again. This time to show you how to convert O and S scale rolling stock with electric pickup installed from incandescent bulbs to LEDs for less than the cost of a single replacement incandescent bulb. Here are three examples I will be using an Amtrak passenger car, a later model porthole caboose, and a vintage post war. Lionel caboose. Here the cars are illuminated using the LED circuit. I used a modification of my HO scale lighting system to develop the lighting circuits for each car. A switch can be used to turn the car lights on and off when not needed. All three O scale Lionel units derive their electrical track pickup using a roller wheel on the center rail and either a wiper set on the axle or direct pickup from the metal wheels. The lighting circuit was modified for each piece of rolling stock using essentially the same components. The basic circuitry consists of three parts. One, track electric pickup where a switch can be used to turn the system on and off and a plug is used to connect to number two, the LED driver unit. This unit contains a bridge rectifier to maintain voltage polarity, a capacitor to prevent flickering at dead spots, and an LED driver chip that maintains a constant current supply of 20 milliamps to the third component, the LED lighting circuit. This circuit will vary depending on the number and color of the LEDs used. The components required for this project have been conveniently assembled into a kit that includes three soft white 5mm LEDs for cabin illumination, two 3mm red LEDs for end of train illumination. Connecting wires with a plug for connecting the electrical pickup, a switch and some heat shrink tubing, and the LED driver unit. This comes pre assembled in the kit to ensure correct assembly. However, for those who wish to construct their own, the components include a 1000 microfarad capacitor rated for 25 volts a bridge rectifier rated for 100 volts and 2 amps, an LED driver IC rated for 90 volts and delivering a constant 20 milliamps of current for LED illumination, a plug to connect to track pickup. All components are mounted on a perforated board measuring approximately a half inch by two and a half inches. It is the lighting circuit and mounting setup that will differ for each piece of rolling stock that is illuminated. A downloadable PDF file located at the website modeltrainsounds.com describes each setup in depth under project 11. Also found here are more details on how to assemble the LED driver unit. For passenger cars, all LEDs will be of the same soft white type, so the circuit in which the LEDs are all arranged is in a parallel setup. In this arrangement, the positive leads of each LED are connected on one side and the negative leads on the other. Although an in-series arrangement will also work, the voltage required to activate the lights will be approximately one volt higher. The circuit is set up on a strip of clear plastic styrene obtained from shrink wrap material. All of the positive leads of the LEDs are connected on one side and the negative leads on the other. Connecting wires are used to join the LEDs. Remember, the positive lead of the LED is longer than the negative. 
A red wire connects the positive side of the LEDs to the VB lead of the LED driver unit labeled with the positive symbol. A black wire connects the negative side of the LEDs to the bridge rectifier capacitor negative joint of the LED driver unit labeled here with the negative symbol. The LED strip is set into the roof of the passenger car and affixed to the roof with adhesive putty. The plug from the driver unit connects to the receiving plug that has been soldered to the track pickup wires. After checking that the lights work, the car can be reassembled. On the track, the LED lights should come on at around 4 to 5 volts. For rolling stock requiring coloured LEDs, such as cabooses, the electric circuit differs. In this porthole caboose, I used two soft white LEDs and one red LED set in the rear wall. In this circuit, the two LEDs of the same color type are set in parallel sequence and the other LED is set up in series. They will not light if all are set up in parallel because of differing forward voltage ratings of the LEDs. They will light if all are set up in series. However, this will require a slightly higher threshold voltage from the track in order that the LEDs light. The white LEDs are set on a styrene strip with the positive leads adjacent and twisted together. These will have a red wire attached going to the VB lead of the LED driver unit. The negative leads of the white LEDs are joined by a connecting wire and then to the positive lead of the red LED. The red LED's negative lead will be connected by a black wire back to the bridge rectifier capacitor negative junction on the LED driver unit. Here the LED circuit is shown. Note I use heat shrink tubing on the solder joints to protect them from breakage and short circuits. The LED circuit has been soldered to the LED driver unit. The LED driver unit is connected by the wires of the track pickup via the plug. The switch could be added as well. Again, test the circuit prior to reassembly. The styrene strip is set into the roof of the cabin with adhesive putty. The red LED is inserted into a hole drilled in the rear wall of the caboose. This hole should be just wide enough to snugly fit the 3mm LED to avoid gluing. The LED driver unit can either hang freely in the cabin or be secured with adhesive putty. The final example is this post-war Lionel caboose, which is a very popular piece of rolling stock. Here, two red LEDs are used, along with one soft white LED set in the cupola. In this circuit, the red LEDs are set in parallel and the white in series. This caboose was originally lit by a single incandescent bulb that would cost around $10 to replace. The bulb is set on a bayonet mount that acts as a conductor along with the single pickup wire from the middle track roller. Two holes are drilled in the rear wall approximately 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch apart. The hole should be of a diameter that will allow the red 3 millimeter LED to fit snugly into the sockets. Use a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole and gradually enlarge it until the LEDs fit. 
The circuit in this case is shown here with the two positive leads of the red LEDs twisted together. They will be joined via a red wire to the VB lead. The two negative leads are joined by the black interconnecting wire allowing enough length to fit the LEDs into the holes in the cabin. The positive lead of the white LED is soldered to one of the red negative leads. The negative lead of the white LED is connected to the negative side of the bridge rectifier junction on the LED driver unit. This circuit can be tested with a 9 volt battery prior to installation. Plug in the battery using the plug connector. Touch the positive leads of the red LED on the VB lead and the negative lead of the white LED to the bridge rectifier negative junction and all LEDs should light. Do not test without the LED driver unit or the LEDs will blow out. In this caboose the switch was installed in a hole in the floor of the cabin. Use a small dab of super glue on the hole ends and glue the switch tabs to the floor of the cabin. Be sure that the slide can move back and forth. Solder one of the pickup wires to the end pin on the switch. The LED circuit is now connected to the LED driver unit using connection wires with heat shrink tube. The plug wires are now soldered, the red wire attaching to the middle switch pin and the black wire to the other wire or as in this case to the old bulb socket. The red LEDs are inserted into the hole sockets in the rear wall cabin and the white LED is positioned under the cupola. The LED driver unit can be attached if required using adhesive putty and the cabin is reattached after final testing. The switch can be accessed while the car is on the track and can turn the light circuit on and off when not required. If interested in trying this project, remember that a kit containing the electrical components is available at the website modeltrainsounds.com see project number 11. Full instructions for assembly are also available at this site in downloadable PDF format. Thanks again for watching and enjoy your model railroading hobby.